Thank you for your attention today. My students, Alexander Simpson and Jacob Ortega, have posted a new um, geotechnical shear wave seismic velocity profile database, uh, mostly for California and Nevada, with a few New Zealand measurements. Uh, you can get to it through louie.pub, where I have all of my public data. Uh, the database also has a, uh, a DOI, and um, uh, if there's uh, uh, any agency or company or grad program that uh, gets an application from uh, Alex Simpson or Jacob Ortega, I highly recommend them. Now, if you go to louie.pub, uh, you'll see uh, links to all of my publicly available uh, resources, including this database. And you scroll down to the uh, shear velocity uh, versus depth VSZ profile archive. Uh, the archive has its own website, which you see here. And uh, you can open any of the um, uh, text uh, boxes to see more information. If you, uh, it's a good time for me to acknowledge all the agencies, national labs, uh, New Zealand agencies, and, and universities, uh, the support from Optum, of course, uh, that um, went into developing this database. Uh, and on the uh, website, uh, uh, the, for instance, the USGS award numbers link to their uh, reports and sometimes also to published papers. Uh, if you go into the uh, database and scroll down, on the website, you see uh, geographic uh, uh, headings, and you can click on any of these to be taken to the section of the database for that uh, uh, heading. Uh, here's uh, Las Vegas and also New Zealand. Here's Southern California. Later on, we're gonna click on the Southern California uh, uh, title here and go to that folder. Uh, here's uh, for uh, Reno. And uh, we're going to take a look at this uh, additional resource, which is a KML of about half of the uh, entries in the database right now. Um, and uh, looking at that, uh, you bring that into Google Earth and you can see that uh, there's about 400 points labeled with um, uh, the shear velocity time average from the surface to 30 meters depth or 100 feet. Uh, that's given in meters per second. Uh, for uh, each of the points. And um, so then you can focus in on an area of interest such as Southern California here. Uh, you can see the San Gabriel River uh, transect here uh, with its 200 measurements. And there's uh, hundreds of other measurements, mostly at uh, uh, seismic network stations, uh, earthquake monitoring stations. Uh, focusing down on the Southern end of the San Gabriel River transect, uh, what you need to do if you want to get more information about any particular measurement is uh, click on it in uh, Google Earth from the KML that you downloaded, and uh, you'll see its so-called file name. The file name here is 198A for the transect. And then you go down into the Southern California folder, which is just a Google Drive available to all. You don't need a, a, a login to Google to view it. And you can see two files that have uh, 198A uh, attached to them. There's a text file, which is the database entry, and there's an associated uh, PDF file, which I'll talk about later. You can uh, download and, um, and look at uh, any of these files. Um, there are, uh, the station codes have um, uh, also uh, part of the file name. So uh, looking at this 198A file from the uh, San Gabriel River uh, transect, um, at the top of the text file, you see location info. Uh, you see the summary VS30 values, and you uh, also uh, will see the uh, depth resolution uh, from the, uh, this particular measurement. Uh, you'll see so th something about the uh, method. Most of these are REMI measurements, refraction microtremor the chain of custody and all the updates that have been made. Uh, and we're currently updating all these files to contain uh, the PIC dispersion values, which you will also see on the uh, dispersion uh, spectra, uh, which is the uh, so-called PF uh, plot for refraction microtremor, uh, the slowness uh, frequency image. And the dispersion picks will be on there. You can see that here between three and uh, six hertz, they're pretty well constrained. Uh, above 6 hertz, they're not uh, that well constrained. 
and, and the constraint is looser uh, below three hertz. Uh, so all that information is there. Uh, if you go down to the bottom of the text file, past the, uh, all the dispersion data, you will see the shear velocity versus, versus depth profile. And uh, you can model that yourself and see uh, uh, whether you like uh, the R fit to the uh, dispersion curve. Um, so what we have is a whole bunch of additional information that explains the uh, entries uh, uh, for these in the USGS uh, uh, VS30 database. Uh, thanks to Alan Yong, he's uh, got a lot of these loaded in to this national database. And if you click on a point such as this one at the, at the north end of the, of the uh, San Gabriel River profile, you'll see the label JL, that's me, John Louie. And uh, so then this database will give you the full shear velocity profile and all the inf other information you might need. Uh, what have we done with the profile? Well, as uh, Thelen uh, published in 2006 in BSSA, um, the spatial variation of shear velocity uh, versus uh, uh, distance down the San Gabriel River is uh, pretty much a fractal, just like these well logs are fractals with depth. And in fact, uh, as you can see on the right, the fractal dimension uh, between the, these two v data sets at very different scales is pretty much the same. So that's quite interesting. Here's another example of looking up uh, the calibration the shear velocity versus depth profile below a uh, uh, Caltech earthquake monitoring station, long time uh, present, uh, called uh, RVR in Riverside, California. Uh, there are some errors in the locations. Uh, in the current KML, we're going to fix it, but uh, even the, the erroneous location is still within 100 meters of the actual array center. Uh, and uh, uh, you go down into the uh, database. If you're interested in R RVR, that's the file name. You'll find the text file and the, uh, in this case, a JPEG image of the, um, of the PF plot, uh, which is uh, not quite as good a quality as the, the one for 198A, but uh, uh, still pretty good. Uh, you can identify a purple no energy area and see the pics at the top of that. Uh, and like here, so those few picks are up there uh, in, the, in the database file, and so is the model. Now, I want to mention that not in this database, there are uh, 10,722 measurements in Las Vegas and, in, and throughout Clark County, really, the whole urban area. Um, you can get those publicly from uh, the GIS gate server uh, at, um, in Clark County. They are the owners of this data set. Uh, you go to the uh, hamburger menu and select uh, map type seismic. And uh, you can see in, um, in gray, the uh, NEHRP um, class D, uh, a bit more hazardous uh, sites, and uh, the NEHRP class C sites, all from those uh, more than 10,000 array measurements. Uh, here's a... Uh, 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 a view of the actual velocity values, not just the, the classes. And uh, you can see here also that uh, the spatial variation of shear velocity is uh, pretty much uh, fractal. Um, what we're doing also with these um, velocity values is uh, uh, we've also posted the, the deep Remy experiments and their results in um, uh, in, this, uh, in this database. Uh, these are published by uh, Asha Pancha uh, back a few years ago in, in BSSA. And they're defining the basin geometry and velocity. And we're taking that together with the uh, geotechnical measurements and putting it into 3D earthquake modeling. You can see here a scenario from a magnitude 6.2 uh, event in Reno. And uh, there are some really... Um, uh, enormous basin amplifications and other effects that lead to almost uh, one meter per second peak ground velocities at three hertz uh, that we could predict from this event uh, that fortunately hasn't happened yet. So thank you very much for your attention and I'd very much like to hear uh, what you would like to see on this uh, website and, and database uh, and please uh, keep me informed of uh, 
things you find uh, lacking. Much appreciated and uh, hope to hear from you.